Okay, so if you're working on a team or you're going to wrap up your code, right, your commits, your changes, and you're going to push them out to some public or shared repository, you might have to do a little bit of preparation work beforehand, right? Um, typically, uh, you're going to do a poll, maybe you're going to fix merge conflicts. Uh, that's pretty basic stuff, but sometimes you need to go a little bit further than that. Sometimes maybe you're tracking a master branch, but you need to make sure that your uh, commit history is up to date with some release branch, for example. Uh, one thing that you might see is if a release branch is being used to actually deploy code in a CI CD pipeline, um, a team might use like reverts to undo changes so that they're always rolling forward, basically. Uh, and if you're on a dev branch of some kind, you might have to pull in those reversions and that history to actually make what you're doing work. Uh, and if you're if you have those commits present still, merging can get kind of wonky. Another thing that you might want to do is if you want to track another developer's branch so that you can merge their changes into your work or use their changes as a basis for your work, you can use Git Rebase for that as well. Um, and then finally, one thing that you might see is squashing commits. I know a lot of public repositories, a lot of GitHub teams um, or teams that don't use uh, a like HTTP site, right, for their uh, version control. So no Bitbucket, no, uh, you know, uh, GitHub or GitLab or anything like that. Uh, they want you to email them a patch. And if you're going to email patches, sometimes they want all the commits squashed down. Um, or if you're going to push to some repository and they're going to actually commit it for you, they want it one commit to actually be reviewed. They don't want a whole bunch of, a whole string of commits that they have to go digging through. So. I'm going to show you how to do all of those things with Git Rebase. There are other tools that you can use to do this, uh, but Rebase is one of the ones that I've I've been using a lot lately to do these things. So let's go ahead and start out with this, this sample project I have here. Uh, as you can see, I've got my good old Rust template uh, add function, and I've got a couple of unit tests over here. Uh, I've got tests for twos and threes and fours, uh, and they all work. I can go ahead and test them. And there you go, all of my tests are passing, looks good. Uh, but I have over here separate commits for all of those. So there we go. I have this initial commit, that was the twos, that came by default, and then I added the threes and then I added the fours. I also have a couple of branches in this project. So you'll see I'm on master branch, let's say that's the default or main branch for this project. And then there's a dev branch, Let's just say this is some other developer's code, the changes that they've been making that they want to get merged in. Uh, and then we have this release branch over here. So let's go and take a look at those. So if I get log dev, you can see that this dev has added a test for fives. Um, it's just in the commit message, but basically it's another unit test like these, but it tests adding five and five together. So that's a change that they made totally irrelevant to what I've done. Uh, and then we can also take a look at the log on release. And as you can see on release, uh, that dev had merged up fives, but that fives got reverted. So let's say maybe there was a bug in there or something like that, uh, or the unit test wasn't working quite right. Even though it got merged up and it got committed, uh, it was reverted inside of release. Uh, that may be because a build was run and the build was failing. And so an admin went and reverted the change and then told the dev, hey, you have to go and fix this on your side. Um, so this history is not present on either dev or master, uh, and the dev's work obviously is not present on my master branch, where all I have is threes and fours and twos. So we have some to-dos here. Let's say for the sake of this demonstration, we want to do a couple of things. First of all, I want to include that other developer's changes in my project. Let's say I don't know what happened in release yet. Let's say that I'm just adding my tests and I want their tests as well. Uh, we're going to do that. Let's do that first. Uh, obviously, you could do a git merge to do that, but if they had many, many changes um, over time and you wanted to build your changes on top of theirs, uh, you might want your history to look like their history instead of like having one big giant merge commit that does everything. I already talked a little bit about that in the video I did on git pull rebase and why you might want to use that instead of merging when you pull. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. So for starters, let's take a look at man get rebase. 
And as you can see, lots of cool options, but the really important stuff is this. This is what reviewing a rebase does. Let's say that you're tracking this branch here and you wanted to rebase on top of the head of some other branch. So if you're on topic and you want to rebase so that your branch starts at the end of this branch, you can do that. And that's what this looks like, right? So now your source, basically where you decided to diverge and start working is based on the head of this branch here. Uh, you can do it from one branch to another. You can do it from uh, different commits on your branch to another. You can also, in, in the process, you can discard interactively or reword or squash commits as well. You can do a lot of really cool things with it. I highly recommend you go and read this and check it out. Yeah, look at all the wild stuff you can do here. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and do the most basic functionality. So if I have my master branch and there's this dev branch and I want my branch to be based on the most recent work of that dev branch, I just say git rebase dev. And as you can see, I get a merge conflict. Now that's okay. We would have gotten that anyway if we had done a git merge, right? Because over here, uh, let's go ahead and load this file again. As you can see, they made changes to the same place in the same file that I made changes. That's to be expected. You're going to get that no matter what. Git doesn't know how to fix that for you, and it's going to ask you to take care of that. So let's go ahead and fix this. I'm going to go ahead and say I want to keep both of these tests. So we're going to just close that block, and we're going to add our other unit test assertion down here. Now I've got my twos, my threes, and my fives. Keep in mind my fours aren't in here yet because that's not where the conflict was. It's going to finish the rebase after I finish resolving this single conflict. Go ahead and just run the dark tests to make sure that they all pass. And they do. Fantastic. Now we can get add and we can get rebase continue. And it's going to keep stepping through, making sure that there aren't other conflicts inside of our histories that we have to resolve. Once we're done with that, we get the option to reword the commit if we want. Uh, you can see that it's been doing things along the way. It's been picking our commits and combining them essentially with the commits coming from this, this other branch. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that alone. And it says we successfully rebased an updated master. And as you can see over here, my files changed. And if I load it, added my fours commit at the bottom. Uh, so I have my fours test, my threes, my fives, and my twos. So I have all of the work that I did on my branch, and I have the work that the other dev did on their branch. But instead of merging, what I've done is rebase. And like I said before, what that means is if I go and look at the git logs, there's no big giant merge commit in here. Basically, I took that dev's commit in the dev branch, and I said that's going to be the new basis, the new starting point of my work. And then on top of that, I added the threes and the fours. There you go. That's a very basic use case for rebase. I have changed my, I have moved my history from one starting point to another, essentially. Cool. And that's a lot cleaner, I think, than, for example, cherry picking, you know, where you're picking one commit at a time um, or a range of commits, and it creates a bunch of new commits which have the same commit hashes as the other branch, uh, or doing a merge where you have this big like merge commit in here, and it, it's kind of eliminating and merging and combining and doing things to all of your guys's code in one big commit. This kind of makes sense because essentially what I did is I didn't change their code. I changed my code after their code was already there. Um, but anyway, that's enough about that. So now I've got this git log where I've got another developer's changes and my changes all merged up into one. Now let's go back and look at our release branch. Let's say that we're getting ready to go and publish to release and we want our changes to reflect that. We can't just go and push them there because we have you know, totally different histories. And not only that, they've reverted something which is in our history, which we didn't account for at the time. Uh, so. This is something that you see a lot, but we're going to do basically the same thing. We can come in here and say git rebase, and we'll say release. And you'll see we get another conflict again. Basically, the conflict is saying, oh, hang on, like we reverted the thing that you had. Uh, we need you to go and resolve that inside of your source code because you still have that code in there. You committed it. Uh, the problem is, though, it can't do that automatically because 
My changes are in here as well. I don't want to discard these. Even though they reverted this test here, I want to keep mine. So we don't want nothing, which is what head says here. And we don't want this test because they reverted it upstream. So let's say there's a bug in it. We don't want to keep it in the end. We can go ahead and remove that. Keep my threes in there. Still don't see fours because remember, that's a separate commit. We're going to worry about that later. We'll write that out. Actually, I'll go ahead and pull that open again so that we can test it. Yep, tests are still passing. Now we can get add and we can get rebase continue. There we go. And it's going to ask us if we want to reword our commit message. I'll just save it to keep it that way. There we go. Now we've rebased an updated master to reflect the commits that happened on the release branch. Let's look at our git log. Okay, here we go. So now my log on master reflects both the developer's work that I included before and the work done on release, which said that I should revert the work that was in there before. So we had the fives commit in our history from dev. Then we had the revert from release. And then all of our work, the entire history of what we've actually contributed to this project starts at this point, threes and fours. Those are my commits. And if I come over here and reload this file, you can see that all my tests are in here. I've got the twos, the threes, and the fours, but not the fives because they wanted those purged. And I can go ahead and test them and everything works great. So now I've done a couple of things. I have borrowed another developer's work and I have merged up changes from the release branch uh, to make sure that I'm not going to push anything broken that the devs wanted evicted. Um, again, these are just examples. Now that I've done that, it's time for me to squash my commits. This is totally going to depend on whether the project that you're actually committing for requires this of you. Some people prefer to keep their entire history till the end of time or to the beginning of time. They don't want to squash commits because Okay, now every commit looks that much bigger. Um, I think it depends. I personally like squashing my commits locally um, so that everything that I have on my local host, everything that I'm going to contribute in either a pull request or in a patch or something is a single commit. Just makes it easier for me to keep track of it. But I don't think that you want to rebase on something that's already been pushed, some remote branch. So if this was master and I had already pushed these commits up there, I probably wouldn't squash them down because that requires rewriting the history, essentially. Um, and I'll show you why in just a second. So let's say I want to combine my changes, my fours and my threes commits into one single commit. I can say git rebase dash i for interactive head to look at where I am right now. And then if I hit tab to autocomplete, you can see I can pick up to the commits that I actually want to do that with. Uh, let's say I just want, uh, I'm going to do up to the fives. Yeah, here we go. So basically, I selected the last two commits, my threes and my fours commits. And you actually get some really good instructions here telling you what's going to happen. So if you leave it as pick, it's just going to keep that commit in the log. It's basically no change. If you reword it, it lets you change the commit message on it. That's useful if you want to amend a bunch of uh, commits really quickly, right? You didn't like the messages, or maybe there's a linter being used on the um, on the repository that you're pushing to, and they want all of your commits to be in a certain format. Uh, you can edit commits. You can squash commits. This is what we're interested in. Use a commit but meld it into the previous. Great exactly what we're going to do. I'm not going to talk too much about these at the moment, uh, but you can go and read the manual to find out. Let's go ahead and squash this fours into this threes. So all we need to do is basically say S for squash. We're going to leave threes because we're going to pick it. We can't squash all of our commits into nothing. We're basically going to pancake them down into a single layer. So you have to have a base layer to do that with. We'll go ahead and save this. And then I get this pop up. And it talks about how this is a combination of two commits. It's giving you a chance to change up the commit message based on the fact that you have a couple of commits messages in the history there. Uh, and it's kind of nice because it gives you all of your um, all of your previous messages here as well. One thing that you might want to do is make this look more formal. So for example, I can say there's a patch 
uh, for testing the threes and fours. There we go. You know, maybe make it something useful for something you're going to make public. Um, or if you have any messages in there that are kind of like uh, test uh, working now, not working now, kind of lousy commit messages, you can fix that up and make this look like something that's going to be useful to a reviewer if they're going to look at it. Uh, and then I can save this. And once again, it says I successfully rebased and updated master. Uh, now, let me show you what I meant when I said earlier that it's going to change your history. If I do a git log, uh, as you can see, I've got my initial commit at the bottom. I've got my fives commit and the reverted fives commit. And then I only have one commit. And it's a totally new commit. I changed my threes and fours commits. Those are gone. Those are not there anymore. And now I have this new one, and it's got my formal message in here that I used that it prompted me to reword. Now think about that for a second. If you had pushed those threes and fours commits to the master branch in the origin, right, a remote master branch, and then you did this, you squashed them down, made a new commit, and you want to push them up, you're probably going to get a message, or you're definitely going to get a message saying the histories don't match. And what that means is basically, Something is wrong, and you need to either force push uh, or do some really janky other Git operations to reconcile the two histories. Uh, and I don't really like force pushing. It's kind of a dangerous and destructive operation. Again, this is something nice to do on your local branch if you're cleaning up a bunch of kind of meaningless commits or not very helpful commits, and you want to um, make every commit a working piece of the project with a single feature, for example. That's what I would use this for, but don't do it on something that you've already pushed. So there you go. Now that I have that, if I wanted to say I was going to commit this onto release, I was going to share it with the world and go public with it, I can check out release. I can get merge up my uh, master branch, uh, and I can do my git log, and there's my change up on top, right on top of the revert fives. Uh, and now my changes are published. So. Hopefully that gives you some ideas of how you can use Rebase to kind of clean up your commits uh, and share in other people's work and prepare to go public with your changes. There are, of course, other ways of doing this. You could be merging, you could be cherry picking, but I find that Rebase makes it a lot faster for me to go through and it lets me reword things on the fly. It lets me fix merge conflicts on the fly. It also changes where my changes started. Uh, which is kind of a nice way for me to keep track of, okay, no, my changes aren't based on something I did. They're based on something that somebody else did, and I took their work into account. Um, so hopefully that helps. Hopefully you got something useful from that. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Go check out my other video on rebasing when you pull. Uh, have a great one. Thanks for watching.